welcome everybody to this very special podcast today. I'm so thrilled to be sharing uh, some of my good friends from across the pond, as they say, from uh, the UK, will be joining us today to talk on another episode of Thriving in the Eye of the Hurricane, um, which is, of course, the title of my new book that's coming out in October. Um, but each three weeks when I do this podcast, uh, I just want to share stories with you all as an audience that will inspire you, will help you get hope, will help you see the possibility that change, transformation, um, no matter what's going on in your life, no matter what your hurricane is all about, you know, because we're all living in a, uh, a often a world of turmoil or turbulence or change or transformation or challenges, whether it's a physical illness or a financial situation or um, work related or with our kids. But when we when we have this understanding that within each of us lies this guidance system, this wisdom to take us into the unknown, to take us into uh, the future that is yet to be created. But when we're creating that from within our own wisdom, our own insights, our own creative intelligence versus our fears, our worries, our habits, we're able to transform our lives and to create a whole new life, regardless of whatever your circumstance is. Now, today, the stories that you're going to hear from our guests um, are maybe not your story. They're maybe like, wow, boy, I thought I had it bad. <laughs> These are stories of people who had problems with addiction and were incarcerated uh, and are the founder of their program, uh, Mama J, Jacqueline Hollows. Uh, had a vision to help those people because she didn't know how to, she'd never worked in a prison. She'd never been in prison that I'm aware of. But one day she was, uh, after having learned the principles for herself that I write about in my book, she was in a park and she just saw all these people who had troubled lives. And she, she said, it just kind of came to her. I'll let her tell that story. But she had a vision that created this program that has led to the recovery of you know, scores of people who are incarcerated, had lives that they feel like they hit a dead end, that they couldn't change. It brought back hope and transformation and change in their lives. So I'm just uh, thrilled to uh, welcome all of you who are here listening to this live and participating in this podcast. And all of you who will be listening to this in the future on some other form like Spotify or uh, yeah, many other uh, ways of hearing it, Pandora, etc. So um, welcome to you all. Uh, you're in for a real treat today. And uh, without further ado, I just want to introduce Mama J, Jacqueline Hollows, who was the founder of Beyond Recovery, a program for working with addictions in prisons. And I'll let her tell her story. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. That was a really beautiful, touching introduction. Um, so I'd like to start with saying that I, I too was in prison, but in my mind. So I, I, was, a, I was a prisoner of insecurity and low self-esteem and thinking that I wasn't good enough and not knowing about the potential that lies within all human beings. And I was successful in my life and I had um, education and, and qualifications and a good job and lots of material things but I felt like I was, I was on a, a roller coaster and I was hanging on with my fingernails and that, that sometimes randomly things happened that, that, that helped my life flow, but they seemed random. 
and occasional. And so coming across this understanding, I uh, initially didn't help me. Uh, initially, I didn't see that it helped me. I didn't see the shifts that were occurring inside, but my life just looked a little easier. And along the journey, I realized I wanted to do something more meaningful with my life. And so I was, I was searching for something more meaningful. <laughs> and, and the incident that you talked about in the park was a moment where I didn't even know why, but I was working with uh, people, people in recovery from addictions of mental health, of, of um, alcohol, of drugs, of all sorts of things. And I described it like I fell in love with everybody. I, I walked into the park and I was interviewing people for, for a film that someone was making and I just fell in love. And I felt overwhelmed with love. My heart was bursting. It, it was coming out of me. And I didn't know what that was. All I knew was I want to work with these people. And what happened for me was I was blessed to have seen that because those people helped me see what what we call the principles or or this experience of of uh understanding how our human experience is created they helped me see it they taught it to me through my conversations with them and through seeing the potential within them and the amazingness within them and then realizing that if it's true for them it must be true for me too and so i i followed that feeling people say they I followed the feeling I, I didn't know that's what I was doing I just knew that I had a mission and it, it wasn't to save people it was it was following almost like the yellow brick road you know I was following my my way home and they they were home that journey led me to working in prisons and sometimes I describe myself as a, a talent scout because I, I went into prison and I met all these amazing people with incredible potential. And I can remember standing in, in groups, you know, I'm, I'm there turning up going, oh, I've got this thing and I don't really know what it is, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and talk to you about it and let's see if it has an impact on your life. And people were telling me about their creative ways of, um, you know, finding cigarettes or passing CDs to each other under cell doors and how amazingly they were coping with prison, which is so horrible. Like, and people do stuff and there's a punishment system and all of that, you know, that's a debate for, for another channel. Um, but it doesn't have to be so horrible. It's, it's a really vile, horrible place and you're locked up in a really tiny cell and, and yet there were these people telling me about these amazing meals that they make in their kettles and, you know, joy that they have riding on forklifts. And it, it, it just was incredible to me. And, and so I didn't transform the people. I shone a light on their own transformations and, and they, they saw it. Um, and so I'm very grateful to have been part of that experience and, and, you know, just love, 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 love doing that. And you asked me earlier, uh, why am I called Mama J? <laughs> so I, uh, I'd been working in the system for a while and then, you know, some of our people got out and, and, the, and were released and some of them get in touch when they're out and, which is great. And, you know, we have conversations and, a couple, a couple of those happen to be on here tonight, and uh, and another lad called Chris, and we said, well, why don't you come and come and teach with us in prison? And so they they came, they came to prison as teachers, and they taught classes, and they 
uh, impacted other people who were in prison and such an incredible incredible it was actually the last live free day group that we ever did so far uh, before lockdown before the covid lockdown so all of us were, were up in a, a place called nottingham in the sort of north northish of england and um and we ran this this amazing group with young people involved in knife crime and um, we had a, a fantastic time. We had such a, a lot of, we saw such a lot of people waking up to their true selves and transforming in front of our eyes. And we, we left to go for a meal that evening and we were, we were all pretty buzzing, you know, who needs drugs when you can do this? You know, we were, we were all buzzing and, and having a wonderful time. And it happened to be Mother's Day or around Mother's Day in the UK. And as we pulled up in the taxi to go to a restaurant, all across the window were, was mum and a, and a heart. And uh, I think it's actually Chris who said it first. And we, let, we leapt out and he said, Mama J, stand by the window. You're our Mama J. And we had photographs taken and whatever. And it stuck. <laughs> so... <laughs> Now I'm Mama J and then other people started calling me Mama J. So I just thought I might, might as well go with it. <laughs> um, but it's a demonstration of the love and connection and equality that we feel. Um, you know, a heart to heart, a soul to soul connection of human beings. And it feels like to me that we're, we're all one big family and you know Pete's in our family now too and he can tell his own story of of how how he came along but we're all one big family and we like a normal family you know we have our different lives and our different uh, separate realities and our different ways of seeing things but the the connection that each individual finds within their own heart that is part of what makes us thrive is, is undisputable. And no matter where you go in the, in the wave of that, you, you end up, or I've ended up, feeling as though I'm always connected, no matter how far away I can get sometimes with my own, my own story. And so to sort of sum up, where my part of this is that I've discovered that it's natural to thrive, that there's nothing stopping us thriving. Like we, we, live, we live by, you know, in the countryside and there's lots of big walls and things like that and little tiny flowers grow out of the wall. You know, life finds a way and we are made of that. We're part of that. And the transformation to me never ends, you know. So I just keep peeling off the layers and finding more within me that is beautiful and, and fresh and pure. And, and then when I find that within me, I find it within, within others too. I, I feel as though it, it shines a light on, on others. So that's, that's me. That's so beautiful, Mama J. Thank you so much. Thank you, Joe. Oh, that was just, I love what you said about the flower on the wall. And I think of prison walls and I think of how all these flowers who are about to talk popped out of those walls. Nice. I can't wait to, to hear what they have to say. So uh, who, does any one of you feel inspired to start first? Um, whoever, just raise your hand if you feel Okay, all right, go for it, Derek. Yeah, hi Joe, thanks for that beautiful intro from before. Um, yeah, I'm Derek Mason, everybody. Um, I'm one of the talents that Mama J discovered whilst on her adventures or journeys into prison. To give you a brief, a brief background on myself, I was in prison when I found the understanding. Um, I'd basically been a career criminal all of my adult life. 
didn't think I needed anything to change. I saw prison as like an occupational hazard. If he was out a few years, well, it doesn't matter how long he was out, but just that came as part and parcel of the job I done. The ride, the ups with the downs. So when I discovered Beyond Recovery, I was trying to get something out of the system, the prison system, to get myself to cozier conditions. And yeah, Beyond Recovery just pointed me back to myself that to have a look at myself and see myself and change, see that the way I thought was the way that my life turned out or the way that I saw my life was before that was the way that I thought. And like I said, I wasn't looking for that when I, when I went to the groups, I was looking for something else, but it sort of shone a light back onto me and I had to take responsibility for myself. And as you say in the book, Joe, that story that you told where I sort of saw something, for me, that was one of the small steps in this momentous journey that I've been on ever since. And it's come for me, it hasn't come with any waves or any ambitions or any foresight. It's just come in the moment. And each little hurricane that I've encountered along the way, I can only tackle it in the moment. And it's that journey, what I was talking about, that started me on that journey, the momentous journey. When I was away, and I thought I had the principles, I thought I knew everything. Then when I was released, that's when it started to get harder for me. And the hurricanes were sort of everywhere. But a few things happened when just being present in the moment of a hurricane, a raging hurricane. And in that moment of calm, you sort of see something and that comes with a feeling. And it's that same sort of feeling that I've been following ever since I knew about this understanding, the good feeling when I was in group or the good feeling when I would admit that I was wrong to somebody and apologize to somebody. And weirdly that would come with a good feeling. And being in the eye of a storm and just seeing the right thing to do, it transcends all of the feelings what the storm's creating. And even when you go back into the storm, it's that sort of tethers me to know that when even though I'm in it, I know what direction to go in. So I just ride it out long enough and I know what the right thing to do is. And just seeing that reinforces me on the next storm and every storm looks different. They all look different, but I know that there's always that way to just see the calm in it and see the way through. And when I left prison, I didn't plan to join Beyond Recovery or start working for Beyond Recovery. My main mission was probably just to stop committing crime and just to be a better father. And on that journey, it's led me to just be a better person in general, show up better, show up as me in the moment, as times when I thought that person wasn't good enough. A lot of the time I thought that person wasn't good enough. And that's another little storm that I've seen through where I'm not good enough to show up. I have to put on a mask to show up. And if I can see that and know that I'm good enough at all times, then that's a storm that I don't really have to challenge anymore. You know, it still comes up for me that should I be here? What am I going to say? But if I just show up in the moment as me, then I know I'll always be good enough. Always, always, always. And even the title of the book, Thriving, it's like what you said, Mama J, that that's our default position to thrive. So no matter where we are, like I've said many times, I was in prison and probably felt freer than I've ever felt before. And that, because I was at my default position and my circumstances didn't determine how I felt. And when I was released, my circumstances were exactly the same as the day before I was, I, I was locked up. But the day before I was locked up, I thought I had to go out to do that, to survive. But then when I came out, I realized I didn't have to do that. So my circumstances were the same, but the only thing that changed was my thinking around what is, what is possible for me and what I would call potential, where I'd limited that before to so much, created all these barriers, had all these thinking about I wasn't this or I was that. And when you do a job for so long, like I sold drugs for numerous years, like, I don't know what that looks like, but I thought I looked like a stereotypical drug dealer. So no matter what clothes I put on, I would still think of myself as a drug dealer and people would look at me and know I'm a drug dealer. When I'm taking my kids to school, if my clothes are too nice, then I look like a drug dealer. 
when I'm taking my kid to school, if I'm too casual, I'm trying to play casual drug dealer. I just thought I looked like a drug dealer and that was just my thinking. But seeing that I'm just, I was just a dad bringing my son to school and seeing through that little storm as well, they're all little storms that we have to battle. And we can only tackle, for me, I can only tackle them in the moment when I see them. Some of them storms, I wouldn't even know that there were storms. But seeing me in my moment, being myself at that default position, I know that in that default position, there are no storms. It's, all, it's just calm. It's just calm. And seeing or following that feeling, as Mama Jay said, has just opened me up to, to seeing everything new in situations where I've been in a hundred times before and only seen one way, only seen one option. To see it once new is a beautiful thing. Such a beautiful thing. It's a, just like you said, Mama Jay, when you put concrete over concrete over concrete and then you still see that flower bud, yeah, that flower is looking for its default position. And that default position is in the sun where he thrives. And we all are searching for that. But we're always, we're, we don't even need to look because it's in us already. It's in us already. It's just knowing to tap into it by being present. And for me, sometimes the storms, not good, but in a storm, when I can see the calm, even that looks beautiful for me. Even that looks beautiful for me. Just to know that there's something else. It doesn't have to be the raging storm. And even within the storm is the calm, not outside the storm, within the storm is the calm. And that's where you like to be. That's where I like to be. And yeah, just to round off, uh, this understanding has totally profoundly changed my life. And like I said, brought me on a journey that I'm still living now and to find a passion that I never thought was my passion, to help people that were lost like me in the same position as me. If I know one person can see the light that I saw in myself, in themselves, then I've, 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 I've completed my mission. And like I said, I'm not putting any limits or any things and I just like helping people. So in the moment, what feels right, I will do. And it's brought me back to Beyond Recovery. It's brought me back to prison, where I've had one of the most amazing times in my life, in a prison, yeah. And it's just brought me on that path. And where the next step is, no, I don't even know. I just know I follow that feeling and it will take me, it might take me into a storm, but I know in that storm, there's an eye in the middle where it's calm. So I just need to find that. So I know my next step, if it's led by that feeling, I know I'm going to be all right and continue this momentous journey. And I'll just leave it there and leave it anyone else to come in. Thank you. Give me the opportunity to speak, Joe. I know this understanding has changed my life. Thank you. Thank you so much, Derek. Uh, I, I put uh, tears down because I'm so moved by what you said. I think you should have written Thriving in the Eye of the Hurricane. <laughs> you got the metaphor. Oh, my God. That's so beautiful what you had to say. Thank you so much. That was just wow. Thank you. Ah, so, uh, Peter, you want to go next? or? Uh, oh, yeah, I'm going, Joe. Yeah. Um, thanks for having me. Um, thanks for a great introduction. Can you, can you hear me all right? I've Peter, can I, can I read, read your poem before you yeah, start? Please, yeah, please do. Please so do. I, I start my chapter called Resilience in Action, Thriving in the Unknown, Hope Springs Eternal. And under the title, I have Peter's poem. He's a, a, a new poet. <laughs> And uh, he wrote this, and I just really thought it was the perfect introduction to this chapter. So I'll just take a moment just to, by way of introducing Peter. For years I tried to extinguish the light inside of me, not knowing it was my spirit trying to burn brightly. Now my spirit lights up the world from where I stand, once a lost, empty, lonely man. Now a beacon of hope, and inspiration for others to see my light and help guide them to their true spirit. Once where my heart was so black, like a piece of coal on a cold fire. Now so full of love, my heart glows a richness of all that's good. I feel the life run through my veins, the same ones I tried so hard to tether. My heart, 
my soul, so full of joy and peace and love, I now feel at home. Peter Mears. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. Hi, guys. Thanks for having me and thanks for listening to me. I'm very nervous because it's pretty much my first time really public speaking. Um, so I'm the odd one out. I haven't actually been to prison, but I've been a prisoner for the last 25 years um, in my own mind, in my own thoughts. Um, for 25 years, I've been addicted to cocaine and alcohol. Um, I looked everywhere for an answer, tried AA, um, you know, alcohol, Alcoholics Anonymous. I, I searched everywhere for help, tried the doctors, I tried CBT, absolutely everything. And then just gave up. Um, I thought, that's it, that's my life. This is me, drinking drugs, you know, so get used to it. But as the years went on, it really took its toll on me because I hated myself, I was self-harming every day. Um, and it got to the point where in May 2019, I tried to take my own life by jumping onto a motorway, um, you know, highway. Um, fortunately, there was a policeman behind me, which I didn't even know he was there because I was that drunk. He pulled me back. Um, and that's when I, th I just figured, well, something's got changed. I don't know what. So I went to see a, a hypnotherapist, and she put me onto SIDS. Um, teachings. She didn't hypnotize me or anything. She literally just showed me the principles. And from that day, everything just started to change. Everything just fell into place. And I became free. I wasn't a prisoner any longer. Um, and uh, I don't know, life. I would never have put my, you know, all I ever saw for my future was death. I didn't think I had a life. Um, I didn't deserve one. But now I've got this understanding. I don't know. In a sense, I suppose I'm angry because I didn't know about it before. Because I didn't know it was all inside me. And I wasted so many years. But now life is just amazing. Absolutely amazing. You know, I cherish every moment I possibly can. Um, my goal in life is just to share as much as I can with anyone else suffering with addiction. Um, but just to not be in that dark place. Um, and for tw 12 years of my addiction, I looked outside for the answer. Um, and so I tried everything, not knowing that I was the answer. I had the answer inside me. You know, except every morning I'd wake up and just had the voices in my head. Right, you're not going to drink today. You're not going to take any cocaine. And then, you know, I used to call him the devil and the angel. And now I hear the devil. Yeah, no, you are going to have a drink. You are going to do some cocaine today. And then the angel. No, no, he's not. You know, and it was just constant. And that's when, as I say, I tried to take my life because I didn't know how to get out of it. It was just a barrage. You know, I felt like the third wheel, just listening to these two voices constantly, you know, arguing. But the principle is, yeah, it's, it's, it's just amazing. It's simple. It's so simple. But it's so powerful, just knowing, you know, I can, I can bring myself back. You know, I, I get caught up in, in my mind every now and then, not on drinking drugs, but where I'd normally find a stressful situation, I would have turned to drinking drugs. Now I know I've got an answer, just sit with it. You know, knowing that feeling I pass, you know, things just become clear. I don't have to turn to it. You know, a drink or a line or anything because I have the answer. So, yeah. Sorry, a bit lost for words, Joe. <laughs> oh, I think it, Mama G wants to say something. I was just wondering if you'd tell us about your writing, Pete. Oh, uh, I've written loads. I really have. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I share a lot with Michael as well because um, she's obviously a poet. But I don't know. When I write, it really comes from my soul, and a lot of it's quite dark and deep. Um, but I think that's my soul trying to express itself. And in a sense, you know, when I read it, even though it sounds dark and deep, it's actually quite happy. 
I don't know if that makes sense. It's my soul really reaching out as if to celebrate, you know, freedom. You know, that, that I've taken the blanket off my soul and let, let, I'm letting the, you know, I'm trying to let the, the light shine through now best I can. So, yeah, the sound terrible public speaking, but I'm trying my best. <laughs> oh, you, you're doing great, Pete. You know, um, one, one of the things that you just said, um, I find that as a writer is true for me too, whether it's poetry or writing a book, what we teach best, what we most need to know. So when we're writing from that place of wisdom of our, from our soul, as you would call it, we hear things from that truth of the eye of the hurricane, that wisdom within that transforms us. So it is, in, it is truly in giving that we receive. And all of us are, you get that are on this call in one way or another are trying, are helping other people. And when we help other people, we're helping ourselves. It, it, what you give comes back to you. And I think uh, you're, you're finding that in your writing. You write something from the, from the heart, from your soul. It touches other people. And when you touch other people, it fills your heart. So thank you, Peter, so much. You did an awesome job. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, everyone. And we have one more, Omar. Hey. Hey, Omar, how you doing? What's happening, Joe? Uh, um, much appreciated for the uh, intro. And I appreciate you having me on here. Um, my name's Omar Wilson. I'm now a director of Young Recovery, but it it wasn't always that way. <laughs> it wasn't always that way. <laughs> so from a young age, I was um, diagnosed with ADHD and dyslexia. This is kind of where it started for me. It's kind of when I started realizing certain things and seeing things. But that it kind of gave me a reason to be how I was because I was naughty, I was energetic, I loved fun and I didn't really like focusing on things I didn't find interesting. And through that, there was a lot of, um, like my mum's kind of struggled because there was three of us and she was by herself and she struggled. So I kind of thought as the oldest boy, let me just try and help her. So I turned to my friends and they were kind of, they kind of just went with what they they saw. And what they saw, I know for me, because what I witnessed is the bad, the bad get good and the good just go to waste. And that's what my thought process was like. And it's hard now to believe how I thought then and what I believed in. So through a long process, I sold drugs for a long time, a very long time. And during that process, I did, I tried to follow what I liked, which was helping people, helping the youth. And I, 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 I went to college and I got my youth work level three and I still turned to drugs because I was tainted by money. And I thought money was everything. I thought if as soon as I get that, then this can happen and that can. And so my thought process was always future-based. And that led me to prison. And in prison, I was the same. It was kind of hard to handle, energetic, naughty at times. And I opted in for every course, right? I told him, put me on everything, put me on everything. Cause I don't want to be inside. I don't want to be locked up all day. Put me on everything. And I went to everything. And for me, if I'm not interested, it's boring. So everything, nothing caught my attention. Nothing caught my attention. It was all repetitive. And I was kind of like the class clown. And I enjoyed AA because I love stories. So I love listening to the stories in AA. And in my mind, I'm comparing myself, comparison. Oh yeah, I'm I'm good. I'm good. I'm just a, I'm just a drug dealer. I'm just a drug dealer. And I found the stories really touching. But after that, I I joined um, Beyond Recovery. And what I didn't realize then was love is a very powerful thing, which we've all felt throughout our lives. 
which we felt the most as babies. We f- we felt it the most as babies. That's where the feeling comes known to us. And as we grow, we never lose that love connection. Even though we cover it up, we never lose that love connection. And that day in that Beyond Recovery room, I had on my mask, but Mama J saw through that and that love connection, it felt... It felt familiar. It's like, wow, I, I, I know this love feeling, but it's never been expressed this way. And I realized it caught me on curiosity. And I never knew curiosity before, but curiosity is a powerful thing because once you're curious, everything else drops from you. Your judgment, your beliefs, your, and you just, you're just curious. You just want to know. So you, you're open to whatever answer comes to you and that allows you to make your decisions and go through however you want to go through it so mama j sneakily she she played on this curiosity and it was beautiful because the love i was feeling just got me engaged with the group and i kind of carried on being naughty and stuff and engaging with the groups and and one day I was naughty and they took my TV away. And within the space of two weeks, I kind of knuckled down and taught myself to read and write. And for the best of 20 something years, I thought I couldn't do that because of the ADHD and dyslexia. But I taught myself to read and write and I found out that I love reading books, which was crazy because all my life, every time in class, when it came around to my time reading books, I would do something so crazy that I'll get kicked out just to avoid the embarrassment that I thought would come from me trying to read in front of the class that thought I could read. And I, I, I did that for so many years, just thinking I don't like reading, I don't like literacy, I don't like English, I don't... Until this one time in myself reading this book, and it was the Modelo that really got me in. And I found myself wanting to read the book, wanting to continue, wanting to picturing it and it was all amazing to me in this one prison cell and it kind of alluded me to wow is it how real was my experience of school and all of that because I thought I couldn't do all of these things when really that was just a thought process that I, I maintained and it was shattered because I just lent into it I literally, and I had time and space and I was with my, I, I was just present and I lent into it and I found out that I loved that. And fast forward, um, it's like, as Derek was saying, I didn't really have plans to join Beyond Recovery and help. And, but when I came out of prison, I, I was caught in one of your hurricanes. I was, I was in it because in prison, everything's done for you. You get fed at this time, you get everything's done for you. There's nothing to think about. You get banged up at this time. You, there's nothing to really think about. But as soon as you come out, you have you got housing, you got to pay rent, you got to find a job now, you got to you got to watch out for all the old stuff and your friends, and everything comes flooding back to you at once. So now you're feeling wow, you're in that tornado, and I was in it for a while. So there was something in me that just wanted to contact Beyond Recovery. But it was knowing that Beyond Recovery was just so open. I could just, I ain't seen them in a year and a bit, but I could just phone them. And I phoned her and we just connected straight away. And it was at that moment there, I realized when she hung up the phone and I'm still feeling bubbly, that the hurricane kind of paused. And I looked at it and I realized that I'm the one with the switch. I turned the hurricane on, I turn it off. I create that hurricane. If I want to live in it, then I will live in it. But I create that hurricane because I like Mama J was gone and I still felt good. I felt that feeling. Yeah, I'm back. Wow. Feeling, yeah, she, look what she done. But I realized, wow, it came to me at a second that like, that's that's you. It's you. The feeling's there. It's all within you. It's, it's what they've been talking to you about. It's you just, I kind of witnessed it for myself and it was just beautiful. And from then we've just gone on to, speak to people and I actually don't even see myself as a teacher or a coach or 
I kind of just see myself as a friend and I just love talking and I feel like I gain more from talking to people. I don't know. I don't really try to impact anymore. I kind of try to impact myself when I talk to people because I find that people blow my mind away and I love seeing people see things and they make me see extra things and it's like forever learning and the principles was just something beautiful and I feel like everybody everybody knows they have it but sometimes you lose it but it's never lost it's just covered up and Peter said it perfect it's knowing that it will pass is like the biggest I, I don't I can't, I can't I got no words for it it's just huge because it's like I, I've been through a situation recently and it was all super real to me but there was that little light that knowing that that feeling would pass that little light at the end kind of it was just humbling and it was humbling it's like a seatbelt like okay I'm ready to sit through this to get to that light over there and I love that but um once again I appreciate you for having me thank you so much Omar oh my god it just gets better and better, doesn't it? <laughs> wow. Oh, man. I, I just love how you guys all shared from the heart and, and gal. <laughs> um, uh, just, it's just so eloquent. It's just so eloquent because there's no words for it. it it's just, it's pure heart to heart transmission that's just happened. You guys just sharing from your heart, sharing from that eye of the hurricane that is in all of us, that you, that is, is, is the source of all the power. It's the source of all the wisdom. It's the source of who we are. It's the I, the I, not just the I, but the I, that's who we are. And your stories of how each of you have in your own way, in your own story, in your own, uh, have discovered that for yourself. And it, 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 in this, these stories began with Mama J seeing that for herself and seeing in each of you who you really are, that I, that, that truth, that essence, that wisdom, that's who you are. So you're all really, you're so beautiful. And all of you who haven't shared are beautiful because we're, and if you haven't yet discovered that in yourself, you're in for a real treat to discover who you really are. So I'm going to open it up now uh, for your um, comments, you know, and if, um, if anyone that's spoken wants to make another comment, please do. But also those of you who are in the audience, which is really, you're just, we're all in this together. So we're all in the same pool. We're sitting in the swimming pool together or the jacuzzi. Uh, having a good time here. So whoever wants to chime in, but Mama had her hand up first, so you go for it. I just wanted to acknowledge you, Joe, um, because I had a you know limited um, time. I didn't get this little bit in, which was that part, you you started my journey because you said that you know there there the guy's transformation started with me, and you started my transformation. Really. Um, because when, when I started looking into addiction and I didn't really understand the principles and I didn't really understand all of this stuff, I started looking into the current paradigms for treating addiction at the time. I, I, I knew something was off. I could tell that, that, that it didn't seem right to me, the, the disease model and and the, 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 you know, trying to stop people, trying to manage people by helping them to not harm themselves, but not actually just having them have transformations. It just seemed off to me. And I, I kept thinking somebody needs to help. Somebody needs to do something about this. And I did loads and loads of research. And I fell across your book, The Serenity Principle. And it spoke to me. I read the serenity principle and I, I hadn't had a, a, you know, I hadn't really enjoyed the principles initially and, but your book made sense. 
And I, I read your book and I absorbed your book and that's what made the difference to me. And then I took that into prison with me and, the, and the, uh, I, I've bought so many copies that, that, that your book is all over the prison system. <laughs> and, um, and initially, you know, eventually I, I had conversations like this, but initially I took diagrams in from your book and explained things to people through your book. So many, many people are out there walking around having been touched by you indirectly. So I just wanted to acknowledge that and say thank you to you. Thank you. Thank you, Mama J. Uh, you know, can I just say one thing about that? Um, for those of you who are want to share, want to write, want to help others. Um, I met, I was always told not to even go to college because I had such poor writing abilities and, and you know, uh, verbal abilities. And I was terrified of public speaking. Um, but when I was 40 and had been teaching the principles for about 10 years, I was giving a talk. And uh, in that talk, there was a, a publisher there in the audience. And he asked me to write that book. He said, you need to write a book about this. This is really transformational. This will, I was, cause I was working with Hazelden and training the staff of the women's program there. And uh, I said, oh no, you know, you got the wrong guy. I don't write. <laughs> I'm going like you, Peter. I, oh, I'm not a public speaker. I, you know, I, I can't write, you know. And he says, no, 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 you, you know, I'll help you. And, and through his encouragement and seeing that potential in me, just like you see it in them and we see it in each other, it, it, it somehow I got past my own self-doubt. And my wife, Michael, who has been my greatest uh, counselor, cheerleader, uh, coach, uh, patients, nurse, whatever, every role. Uh, I would come back to bed after two hours of struggling with writing and, and, oh, I just can't write. I'm never going to be able to do this. And she would say, well, well, what are you, what are you trying to write? And I said, well, I was trying to write the introduction. And she said, well, why are you doing that? I said, well, I don't know. Isn't that what writers are supposed to do? And, and she says, well, write what you feel inspired to write. And I said, Oh, that's a good idea. And I went back and I wrote 17 pages without stopping. My hands in those days was before laptops, my hands cramped. So trust that we all have that Lynn with what you're doing with your programs and nurses, you know, uh, all of you have, in your own way are, are helping people. And we, it's not us personal. It's us impersonal. That's, we get out of the way and, and, and spirit does the work for us. The, the divine intelligence guides us and we get the personal self kind of out of the way and just give it voice. That's, that's what changes us and changes others. So, who else has a comment? I, I, just, I just wanted to add, I have less than a question and more of a comment um, you know, spoiler alert, I've never been to jail. I've never been to prison. Maybe a big surprise. Corporate prison. <laughs> but I, uh, I understand in my, in my view, prison is a place where you can be reminded that you're less. You can be reminded that you're not worthy. You can be reminded that you don't belong. And what's so incredible to me listening to you is you all found that you were worth more and you were better and you were worthy of much much more and what a wonderful story to find out the place that was supposed to make you diminish made you grow it's remarkable that was it thank you Anna. john you can put your hand up john friend do you want to unmute um joe you know as your friend um, I love this book the first time I read it. It, um, it everything people are saying, it did that for me. Um, and just this one line, uh, George's ease uh, transformed possible relapse into a fine opportunity. His George's situation had not, this is random, by the way. I just opened the book to this page. Um, George's situation had not changed only his state of mind. 
And it's this whole idea that inside is the whole world and universe and everything. And then there's the outside, the people we meet and so on. Um, I just want to second everything that people have been saying here about transformation, about Joe, your your role in helping us get there. Um, I love you, Joe. That's as simple as that. I love you. Thank you, John. I love you too. I think um, Nikon had his hand up for a while. Uh, uh, um, yeah. uh, where, where, how do Over I Over here. Do there he is. I, um, yeah. Hey, hey, Joe. Oh, so. oh, there you are. Nikon in Thailand. Yay. Yeah, it is 2 a.m. here and well worth it. Um, <laughs> you look so bright and cheery for 2 a.m. It, yeah, it's my hanging out with Michael Neo at 2 a.m. <laughs> um, <laughs> It's so nice to meet you. It's so nice to meet um, Michael because I've heard so much about you in stories from Joe. And um, thank you to Mama Jay and Derek and Peter and everybody who shared. Is I thought I understood the principles until I arrived on this call and I realized I don't know anything. <laughs> and I resonate that's with good. all. That's a good thing, by the way. <laughs> yeah. And I just want to tell everybody, the people who shared, like I heard. I saw myself in all of your stories. I saw myself as, oh wait, I'm still in prison of my mind and I still don't think I'm good enough. And I use fear to drive success and I'm blind to my own success and never and everything's never good enough. Um, I've been addicted to porn most of my life just because it's the only place I found quiet. Um, I think in Derek and what you shared about showing up as me, I'm terrified to show up as me. Because I don't think that's good enough either. And what Omar shared, just following that feeling and then thought, I think most of my life I realized my thoughts have been future-based. If only I could do this, I could, people would like me. If only I could make enough money, then I'll be acceptable. Yeah. <laughs> just to really sit with that moment. And what occurred to me was, the gentleman who shared like i think my i have such an admiration for your grounding and verve and moving forward i hope i can be a little bit more like you because in your story i see myself so joe i did not expect to get my ass kicked <laughs> from the first minute <laughs> on this call uh, but um glad, to, glad yeah. that you joined us yeah yeah me too and so Kind of at a loss for words and just sitting in this feeling and kappa kappa how do you say uh kappa 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 kappa, 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 kappa yeah kappa, thank you kappa, kappa. yeah and i guess my, my thought is like well, where do i go from here joe and then i remember omar wilson's words of just just follow the feeling and just see where it takes you and i think for the first time i'm, I'm more willing to follow that rather than intellectualize it and um, oh, Peter, I, I've I've had secretly hid in my I, suicidal ideation a lot. Like I've looked at oncoming traffic and had moments like, you know what? It'd be nice to just stop everything. Like I've totally been on that edge. And it's People like had those moments. Okay. Yeah, and it's so nice that you guys just openly share that stuff. I'm like, wait, it's okay, you know? Like, yeah. and it's so transformative to not. I think the 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 one thought of not being alone is so helpful in this conversation. Yeah. Yeah. So I appreciate all of you. Well, I'm going to, uh, there's a couple other people with their hands up. Um, Mary Brett. Hi, everyone. Oh, I'm in the midst of a, an emotional happy day. Uh, <laughs> and, and what I want to say is that I fit in with you guys. Yes, and you know what? I, Got, I got arrested for disorderly conduct uh, drunk a couple years before I sobered up. So, you know, I've been arrested too, guys. So, um, so. <laughs> Welcome to the club. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I fit in. I just, just needed to say that. Me, me too. Me too. <laughs> yeah. And, and you know, I, I got in just a couple minutes late. And Mama J, you know, you talked about being insecure and, 
unsure of yourself. And it's so been me for so, so many years and even my, my years in recovery. And then, you know, and then you said, um, I took some notes, guys, D discovered that it's natural. You discovered that it's natural to survive, to, to thrive. And I, and then I put dot, 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 it is safe to thrive. You know, I, I I'm learning not to let my, my life, you know, not to go down that negative road anymore. It's like, it's no fun, you know, but it's, so that's one thing, but you guys all, every one of you touched me in such a beautiful w w way, you know, and, and Omar, you said, you know, that loving feeling that we had way back and, and I can create that hurricane or not. I, I don't have, you guys all and you know, and Peter, Peter, you talking about your, your soul and, and taking, you know, I get the, the, I want to, Joe, I want to buy that book so that I can have Peter's poem. <laughs> <laughs> You know, well, Mary, so, you're, you're, you're making a great summary of the entire. Uh, yeah, entire and, and he said, take it. He's taken the blanket off his soul. And then I have to hit one. Oh, and Derek and Derek said, I am good enough in the moment. So you guys, I, I loved all of Joe's calls. I'm very grateful. to. Yeah, I'm, and you all you all you're all just helping me get there more. I, you're helping me get there more. Thank you. We get by with all of our friends. Yeah. Divyesh, would you like to? There you go. Oh, thank, thank you so much, uh, uh, Joe, and everyone else here. And sorry, I came in at about four forty-five. When I say four forty-five, it's four forty-five a.m. here in Sydney, in mm. Australia. Oh, you're not. And I take, and I take my hat off. Yeah, I, I was planning to wake up at four, which is the beginning of your talk. But hey. Uh, dozing came at, which is regular at around this time, but uh, and then Nikon or Nikon Nikon beat me at two a.m. in Thailand. So here we go. Uh, <laughs> it's lovely to hear all of you, and whatever I've heard, it's okay because I, this is recorded. But more important, Derek and Omar and Joe and Jackie, and even Nik Nikon's couple of talks have sort of come when he's with Michael Neal or somebody, or this whole family of 3P, plus the honesty with which I hear, it's like I've, I've had Derek, I don't know how many times, 3P UK, and Omar sitting in LA, I think, and well, every time I hear, there is an upliftment from the prison of my mind. Every time I hear is a call for love. Every time I hear, there is a call to see my insecurities for the thinking it is and i too am 14 and a half years sober i lived in the prison of my mind and i got a 12 step but somehow 12 step is a part of all this maybe but it's leading me it led me to you guys mm -hmm. the prisons of mind prisons of soul the weights of the world on my shoulders and how the 3p with you your presence and your love is getting me through one that these have all come back in another way, another addiction. But, but anyway, I have hope and sort of a little underlying exaltation of life, it seems to be coming around. So mm -hmm. thank you for your presence, guys. Well, thank you so much for sharing what you just said, Nivesh. Um, and all of you, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for being here and attending this. And those of you who aren't here right now in this time, that will be here in the future, we welcome you as much. So um, we'll be meeting again in three weeks for another episode, podcast episode. And next time we'll be having people who have worked in communities in the Bronx and in Miami and uh, other parts of the country who've taken the principles into high risk communities and helped transform communities. So we'll look forward to that. And then the next one after that is with Michael Neal, who wrote the forward to my book. And uh, so tune in again next time, but thank you all so much. And remember the most important thing is that uh, it's um, everything that you've ever looked for is already within you. And all we have to do is let go of our thinking and realize who we really are, that eye of the hurricane. So see you next time. And, and if you want to buy my book, it's already for sale. It's just not. <laughs> <laughs>
there in person yet until October, but you can go on any website and uh, uh, pre-order it. So thank you so much. And Mama J, thank you so much. Peter, thank you so much. Omar, Derek, and all of the rest of you, thank you so much for being here.